Welcome to Women Inspired. I'm your host, Linda Ugolo, and this show will give us an inside look on how entrepreneurs, artists, healers, and changemakers put their dreams into action. And today, my guest is Francesca Montillo. Welcome, Francesca. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. I am so excited to have you here. I love the name of your business. Thank it you. is Lazy Italian Culinary Adventures. Adventures. Yes, it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> it's a long one, but I what it brings to me is this very, very kind of like laid enjoyable, back. laid yes. back, the lazy Italian yes. culinary adventure. So it's like really enjoyable, very kind of, you know, you can really stretch it out and also the culinary part. Yes, yes. Tell me about it. Sure. So I started my business um, offering culinary adventures to Italy. As a native Italian, I was uh, born there and grew up in a very laid back, as Italians tend to be. They enjoy uh, La Dolce Vita. And uh, my business brings people to Italy to do just that. So for a week, we go to Italy and we do culinary classes and culinary tours and day trips to wineries and cheese factories and all of the good things that is Italy. Wow. So, so like, what made you think of that? I mean, it's not like in school they say, what do you want, want to, be to be when you grow well, up? And you say, I want to be... Uh, to want to do this, of yeah. course. Uh, well, I... I came to this country when I was 10, so during my whole life after the move, we would go back every summer. And uh, in hindsight, looking back, my preferred period in any given time during the year was always my trips back to Italy. Uh -huh. uh, it's really what gave me the most joy, the most satisfaction. It was just so fun. Um, so as I got older, I did the things that, that you think are what society wants you to do. You go to college, you get the full-time corporate job. Um, but in the back of my mind, I always had this thing. It's like, okay, well, if I love going back so much, I wonder if other people would love coming with me. Uh, so that's really how the business started and bringing people there to, to share with what I do. So, I mean, it's a great idea. I'm sure other people who love traveling have thought, oh, I'd love to bring a group. Sure. How do you even get that going? Um, well, at, uh, social media these days, so I created my website and I started writing articles about Italy for various publications and I promoted my business through social media, through network events, and it's Italy. It's not that hard to sell. Uh, <laughs> so Italy sells itself. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's not, a, it's not a hard sell, that's for sure. Uh -huh. So uh, it, it's, it's really, it's, I've met a lot of people along the way who uh, either have been to Italy and have loved it or it's definitely on their top list of places they want to visit uh -huh. so so and then so what does your tour I mean culinary obviously it's people who love food mm -hmm. and is so is that what that's the main theme. that makes your theme your yes. tour different than other that's people that's the main theme there's a lot of uh, uh, you know there's a lot of competition for sure and a lot of similar businesses offer women only tours which are certainly admirable um, but mine's really not open to women only. It's open for anyone who really has an interest in, in Italy, first and foremost, and then in the cuisine. Because mm -hmm. that's the main focus, is, is the food. So we take cooking classes. So people who love cooking would love to be on a tour like this because we're taking classes with uh, natives. So in Tuscany, we are with Tuscans who teach us their methods. Uh, and then we visit wineries, so people who are into wine appreciation enjoy going to the wineries and seeing how the wine is made. <laughs> wow, that sounds like an amazing... So how long are the trips? So there are seven nights, eight days, seven nights. Uh -huh. So uh, I have uh, four coming up this year. I have three in uh, where we stay in beautiful hotels and one in a private villa in Chianti. Oh, so you vary the the correct. types of uh, uh, correct. accommodations mm -hmm. to give a different flavor that exactly. something might appeal to one kind of person and something exactly. to another. So I have one that's right in Florence, so that's obviously going to appeal to somebody who's really into the city, mm -hmm. whereas Chianti is a little bit more remote. And it's What is the name? Chianti. 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 Oh, like the wine. Like the wine, of course. <laughs> um, like the wine. <laughs> then I have a week in Bologna, which um, is a less known city, um, but it's the food capital of Italy. Mm. Um, there's a lot of great food that comes from that area. So uh, to start a business doing culinary adventures and not include Bologna would be a disservice. So like when you say it's the culinary capital, what, what does that mean? What kind of foods? There's a lot of, uh, so there's a lot, it's known for a lot of great foods. So if you've heard of uh, the Bolognese sauce that uh -huh. actually originated from Bologna, they're known for fresh pasta. So they make a lot of tortellini and raviolis and uh, the lasagnas. 
come from there. A lot of the authentic products like the Parmigiano Reggiano cheese is made in Emilia Romagna re region. Uh, the prosciuttos, um, they're made there as well. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, definitely the mecca for uh, Italian food in Italy. Wow. So how many people will you have at one time so, to make this work? I sure, mean, so it's small groups, 10 to 12. Uh -huh. I cut off at 12, that's the max, but mm -hmm. uh, tw 10's the, sort of the sweet number. Mm -hmm. um, I like having small groups because we can travel more like a family and also you can get into the, uh, the smaller hotel, uh, the smaller uh, restaurants and travel more as a, a family than a, a tourist group where, mm -hmm. you know, you have to carry a little flag with you. Um, yeah. That, that's <laughs> no fun. <laughs> that's not what your style. No. That's mm -hmm. really great. So do people generally sign up and they don't know the other people or do people go as like groups Cor already? Uh, correct. Uh, I do offer private groups if somebody would like to go uh, mm -hmm. and have just your own group go. I, uh, that's a service that I also have. But usually it's, you know, two people, couples that will sign up and then they'll meet once once we're there. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just sitting here thinking how, you know, we're such a melting pot here in the mm -hmm. U.S. And when I was young, it wasn't that common to do a lot of traveling, but today it is. Yes. And I'm just thinking about how, what a wonderful idea this could be for someone who loves to go back to their home country mm -hmm and enjoys or misses the food that they right. can get there and how they can turn that into a viable business right. like you have done. Right. The world has gotten a lot smaller, yeah. as they say. And for me, um, exactly what you just pointed out, it's a way for me to manage going back to my native land more often. Uh, the nine to five job doesn't really allow for much time off to be able to do the things that I enjoyed. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, It's not always easy requesting the month a month of August off. Yeah. yeah. So is this full time for you? Uh, I hope that it will be someday. Yes. Okay. So yes. not quite yet. Not quite. I'm not quite there yet. So it's more like a, a side business that's growing that you. Side is, is side and I'm devoting more than full time hours okay. into it for sure. It's a lot of work connecting with my vendors in Italy and making sure that I hire people that um, that I've met either in person, I've gone back to meet them, or through Skype interviews and sort of vet everybody before. I bring people there. Um, so right now it's a side business in the sense that uh, it's just starting, but it's, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Well, that's fantastic and really fascinating because I would not have thought, you know, I think, well, how do you get the people there? Mm -hmm. But that other piece that you're talking about, creating relationships yes. with the, the vendors. Now, not everyone may understand what a vendor is. You're talking about the restaurants. The restaurants, the, the hotels, uh, also the people we're doing cooking classes with. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't sort of just Google that and be like, oh, this person offers classes. Let me sign up with him or her. Uh, you have to interview them and meet with them at some level, either in person or by Skype, and read their reviews and get their uh, recommendations. Um, so a lot of work. It's taken me, I would say, the upwards of 15 months to get to where I am today of uh, finding these people who I think will add value to my tours and not just pick them out of a, uh -huh. you know, a lineup. <laughs> have you had some difficulties? Have you have um, you had some bad choices uh, yet? <laughs> uh, not yet, thankfully. Uh, I think the difficulties sometimes come in uh, just connecting with people in Italy. You know, like we were saying, they're more laid back. You know, they'll get back to me a week later, and here in the states, we sort of work. Uh, under different timelines. You know, if I send an email today, I'd like a response by tomorrow, whereas I might send an email to somebody today and not hear back for 10 days. I wonder, mm -hmm. should I be you know, seeking another uh, instructor for my classes? Should I call them? Should I pack a bag and physically go there? Which I, which I did do in October. I was just there meeting with vendors, mm -hmm. um, interview with them. So mm -hmm. whatever it takes to make sure that. The, the client at the end has a memorable experience. Right. So will you work with, other than accommodations, will you work with the same vendors otherwise, the same restaurants, the same uh, uh, it, it teachers? Dep it, it depends. It depends on the city. Uh, for 2017, I have these four locations lined up. I haven't quite thought of where I'd want to go in 2018. Okay. Um, since I'm from Calabria, I'm from southern Italy, I may uh, focus more on the uh, southern part of Italy for 2018. Uh -huh. uh, bring people to Sicily or Calabria or Puglia. But for our 2017, we're headed to Florence, Rome, Chianti, and Bologna. So it seems to me that there are a couple of benefits of doing that. One is that it's interesting for you. Yes. The second one is that if people enjoyed the first trip, right, they'll come back to the, they'll come back to the second trip. Correct. 
Correct. So that's a win-win. Um, there, are the four weeks I have are back to back. Um, so if somebody had the uh, the means and the inclination to want to stay longer, they could certainly book two weeks. Um, and you know, we stay, the hotels and the lodgings that I've selected, we stay there for the whole seven days. Mm -hmm. A lot of other tours, um, you move after a few nights, you go to a different city. There's pros and cons to both. Mm -hmm. uh, I like being able to stay in one location and doing day trips mm -hmm. uh, just because you don't want to tire people out. Uh, you don't want to go there and join a great week and be confronted with travel mm -hmm. fatigue along the way. Yeah. Um, so I find that day trips just work better for that reason. And then at the end of the day, you go back to, to your home base for the week. Yeah, it makes it a little more comfy, Com especially if it's exactly. a comfortable place, you like yeah, it. Right, and, and that's why it's been, um, I put a lot of diligence in the places where we stay because we're there for seven nights. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that I give people great accommodations yeah. because, if it, you know, if they're unhappy, then they'll stuck there. That for really <laughs> stays with them for that whole time. Right, that's right. right. So you're at the the beginning of your tours. You Have you done tours yet? Uh, yes and no. I've brought a lot of people back over the years, friends. Uh, I've uh, set up a lot of itineraries from friends and family from here to there, um, but not through my business. Not so through the lazy correct. Italian culinary yes. adventure. So 2017 is uh -huh. the inaugural That's year. so exciting. So mm -hmm. when is your first trip going to be? May 19th will be in Bologna. Uh -huh. so and really you'll sad. be there on um, four consecutive weeks mm -hmm. of four different trips. Four different trips, four weeks, four locations, correct. Wow. Uh, there is a day off in between sort of for myself to catch my breath. <laughs> yes. And will you do the same thing again later in the year? No. For the first year, I've decided to focus on these four trips and I'm um, taking uh, private clients. So if somebody wants to bring their own group to one of these locations, a uh, group of friends. I've had uh, somebody who's celebrating a big birthday this year who's thinking of doing a group of six ladies. They want to travel together in the fall. Um, so that might happen, but uh, organized, there's just the four. That sounds sane. Mm -hmm. It sounds insane? It sounds sane. Yes, exactly. Yes. For the first year, I wanted to, to focus in that way. And well, then, also, if you're going to be opening up a whole other area of touring mm -hmm. in 2018, right. I need then to start you need to research that. You exactly. may need to go and travel around and meet exactly. the... And your I new also vendors. teach cooking here. I'm a culinary instructor. Okay, so, so that's a whole other piece right. to your business. Correct. Well, tell me about that. Sure. So I teach uh, Italian cooking. I teach it either out of my home or in clients' homes. So people will call me and say, it's my husband's birthday. I just had somebody say, you know, I don't know what to get my husband. Will you come and do a private cooking lesson? So I've had that. And I also teach at the adult education centers, so in uh, Brookline, in Arlington, and in Cambridge. So this is in the Mass Boston, Massachusetts yes, area. Yes, correct, mm -hmm. correct. So I, I do the public classes there, but private classes uh, either out of my home once a month or at clients' homes. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot going on. <laughs> so it's food really excites you? Uh, as an Italian, you know, I uh, was always brought up around home-cooked meals. Uh, I think growing up, I took that for granted. I figured everybody must have a nice family meal at the end of the day at home, and it wasn't until I was older and started hanging out with friends and would go over their homes, and that wasn't how it was for everybody. You know, everybody sort of does their own thing. Um, I think for me, food, it's not just food, like the meal, but just family time, being able to spend time with, with family. Mm -hmm. So and you're creating experience. experiences. Correct, correct. It's more than just the, the food. Uh, it's creating family time and experiences. So I imagine your cooking classes are nice experiences as well. They're a lot of fun. People yeah. have a lot of fun. I love having people over at my house for the classes. And then uh, after we cook the meal together, we sit down on my dining room table and we eat uh, as a family, as I do every night. Uh, but now I have people over. And they really enjoy it. I've had you know, somebody who brought her husband and her son to the class. Mm -hmm. she, she wanted them to experience the class as well. So mm. it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So what what do you feel is next for you other than um, is it getting through this year? Maybe I, thinking of something a little different in Italy for next year. Do you have other ideas that um, you are? So for this year, my main focus is going to be on uh, getting uh, some publicity for my business and promoting the tours that are coming up in May and June. 
continue with the classes, the cooking classes, um, and hopefully uh, we'll also have more private clients, more help people build their itinerary for Italy and do some trip planning for them. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's exciting to see where it goes. Yeah. So how does it feel starting this kind of business? Like, are, do you wake up every day feeling like really excited? It, or do you so have some days where you think, uh, oh, this well, is hard? Uh, it's both. It's definitely <laughs> both. I wake up uh, in the morning and the first thing I do is check my uh, email from my business email to see you know uh, what came through overnight or who has contacted me for an interest in a tour or who wants to hire me for a class um, so it's still definitely very exciting it's uh, you know you're also vulnerable a bit when you start a business you have your moments of will this work will this not work but uh, for the most part I'm still in the honeymoon phase where I'm loving it yeah so what get, when you do have those moments what do you do to keep yourself in that place of excitement? Um, I, th I definitely think of the end result, which is for me to be able to do this full time. I keep the eye on uh, the prize, as they say, of being able to be fully uh, reliant on myself and my business to support myself mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to do that long term. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the motivation that keeps me going, mm -hmm. uh, to be able to quit my corporate job someday soon and to do this on a full-time basis. Okay, so you are working in corporate. I'm, I still have my nine to five. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not for, you know, we'll see what this year brings, but my goal is to do this business. But time. that is so inspiring to me because you, you're you building something while you're working nine to five. I th and there are a lot of people who may be working nine to five who may think to themselves, someday I'd love to do something different, but how do I how even to do that? Time. How do I find the time? Yeah. I think it's how do I get traction? What advice would you give them? Um, I think it's definitely prioritize. Uh, I've, um, I can't remember a night in the last 15 months where I've actually sat on the couch and watched a movie. Mm -hmm. uh, as soon as I get home from my day job, I have dinner and then I go work on my business from about 6 to 11. That's been my life for the past, uh, more than the past year. Mm -hmm. If you want it bad enough, uh, you know, you, you, you know, what's the saying? If you want it bad enough, you'll find a reason to do it. If not, you'll find an excuse not to. Um, but if, if it's something that your heart's into it, then, then you have to put 100% effort into it. Mm -hmm. um, there's no compromise if you want it bad enough. Yeah, well, I can tell that you are really motivated then I am, and you know, I, like I said, uh, anything that brings me back to my family in Italy on a more frequent basis. Uh -huh. So you still have family members my there? My entire family is in Italy. Oh, um, no, my mom really? and my sister are here. My uh -huh. dad is deceased, but uh -huh. all my cousins and uncles and uh, everyone else is there. So do you see them on tour? <laughs> yes. I, that's actually, I have a cousin in Rome, so I said, you know, we'll run into you during, uh, during our tours. I'll have them visit your establishment. <laughs> uh-huh. So yes, very exciting. Yeah, so that that's a wonderful tie and tug mm -hmm. for you to have the family there. Right, it's great motivation because uh -huh. I would hate to you know think of a year where I'm unable to go back to Italy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's mm -hmm. what also what keeps me going. <laughs> so then, how do you manage to take a month off? From your corporate job. It's not easy. <laughs> That's why I want to go work for myself full time. It's not easy. It takes a lot of accruing and not taking uh, time off for 11 months to be able to take some time off. I've been fortunate so far where uh, I work somewhere where i um, given a, a good amount of vacation time during the course of the year. So that helps. But it's always a matter of, you know, working 80 hours for the month before to be able to take time off when I'm away. Yeah. yeah. So definitely a lot of bouncing balls in the air. But. Yeah, so you are working hard. <laughs> How do you recharge? Um, right now my business actually recharges me, to be honest. It really does. Uh, I, because I don't, it's, so far it's still, even though it's a lot of work, it doesn't actually feel like work. You know, having to read up on Italy and uh, do some research on an Italian location is hardly what I think of as work. So that, that's recharging. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, gives me uh, inspiration and motivation anyway. Mm -hmm. but Italy recharges me too. So I just got back from in October. Uh -huh. so. Uh -huh. so you don't have some kind of like daily or weekly 
Do you ever take a break? Walking. Walking. Okay, I you do walk. walk a lot. I walk about five or six miles a day. Oh, so, no kidding. So I, oh, you know. there's your recharge. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. So you walk around the city? You walk I walk, around. yeah. I walk uh, at least uh, two to three 20-minute intervals during the course of the day. So the when, how do you schedule that in to your day? Uh, the morning. I get up at 5 o'clock. I'm an early riser, so I get up at, at 5, and I'm usually at the office by 7, even though I don't have to start until a little bit later. Um, so I spend the morning doing a little 20-minute walk, and then at lunch I'll eat at my desk and then do another 20-minute walk, and uh, you can fit them in. Mm -hmm. That's find the time. Wow, it's making me feel like I, I'm not <laughs> in an office except for my own, and I don't get out yeah. that much, and this is, feels like it's putting me to shame, so I'm going to go out hard, there hard, and I doubt do it. it. I I'm going to do that more. I, I like it when people call me up and they say, hey, I'm going for a walk. You want to join me? you want to come? Yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> it's hard for me to um, initiate it mm -hmm. on your own. Myself, yeah. Well, I love listening to podcasts, too. So I find yeah. that if I throw those on, um, uh, it, it counts as working on my business while taking a walk because I'm learning something. I mm -hmm. usually listen to podcasts mm -hmm. about business or entrepreneurship. So it's... Uh, I'm multitasking, taking a walk, and at the same time learning something from, from an expert. Uh huh. That's really cool. So, what are some of your favorite podcasts? Do you, oh, is there I anything you want to? Sure. I listen to uh, Brandon Bouchard, The Charged Life, a lot. Uh, Adrian Dorison. Uh huh. Uh, the Mind Aware Show uh, is another great one uh, by, by uh, Dana Wild. Uh, those are sort of my my invisibilia. It's up there, too. Okay. So I listen to a lot of those. We'll put those in the show notes. Because I'm sure people will, you know, think, oh, number one, I'm going to go out and take more walks and listen to podcasts, mm -hmm. and now I have some good ones to listen to, mm -hmm. especially if I want to build a business. Right. Or, you know, uh, grow whatever my work is. And number two, I forgot what number two was, <laughs> but walking. And, and... People who have not really gotten into podcasts at all will. I, they're such a great source. It's a oh. fabulous resource. Right. Yeah. It yeah. wasn't. I wasn't until about I would say the past six months that I started listening to them, mm -hmm. and I've just learned so much from them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if you don't have time to sit down and read a book, uh, which I encourage everybody to do anyway, but if you know if you don't have that time, you can. There's still a lot you can learn from podcasts. So yeah, that's great. Are good for them. And then there, if there's really compelling, then you say, oh, I can't wait to get my walk in. Because you get because to I, listen. I get to exactly. listen. Exactly. It really, yeah. it, it's really true. You're, you know, you're half kidding, but it's, it really is true. No, I wasn't kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, definitely. It's, it's, uh, you're doing something good for your body and your mind. Yeah, at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah that's great. So that is a, that's a great recharge mm -hmm. right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Gain some fresh air. Gain some fresh ideas. And fresh perspective. Fresh perspectives, mm -hmm. yeah. And I find, I know I do listen to podcasts as well. And I find that it's really helpful to surround myself with people and ideas that are kind of expand my, my current knowledge base mm -hmm. because it opens me to the new possibilities right. and keeps me in that state of excitement mm -hmm that yeah, you said yeah. that you have. Right. I feel the same way. I feel so excited about growing my coaching business. Mm -hmm. or Right, that it doesn't know, really drain you, right? It doesn't, it no, gives you that. It does, uh, yeah. and at the same time, I know I need to go out and take a walk. Right. So I'm glad it's that a win -win. you- win-win. <laughs> you're inspiring mm -hmm. me. I'll let you know how I do. No, please do, <laughs> keep me posted. So I, I, one of the things I love to do is think about, you know, what are the inner qualities that we need as human beings, mm -hmm. as business owners, or, you know, even if we're artists, artists are business owners too, mm -hmm. to, that help bring more meaning to the work we do mm -hmm. and also help us move through it more gracefully and bring us more enjoyment and happiness. Mm -hmm. And so I, I have a little box oh, here, uh -huh. and I call it my wild card pick. Oh, and geez. we can start with one. Maybe we'll have time for two. For two, okay. And just you can pick it, mm. read the word, and whatever comes to you, like how this, how that you feel about this works for you, either personally or in your business. Okay. I'd love to hear about it. Let's see. I like yellow, so I picked yellow, and I picked resilience. Oh my goodness, you've got to have a lot of that when you start a business. 
Um, yeah. Tell us in what way do you need resilience? Uh, you just have to keep, you get a lot of no's when you start a business. Uh, if, whether you're pitching uh, to some kind of marketing, someone to help you for marketing, or to help promote your business through a blog post, or you just, um, you have to knock on a lot of doors and sometimes they'll either say no, they won't answer at all, but you have to be resilient and just keep going at it. Uh, you have to have, uh, you have to be tenacious in uh, what you need and until you get your yes. Uh, I'm a firm believer that you sort of have to go through a number of no's before your yes comes. So every time, whether I'm pitching an idea to someone or I'm pitching a blog post and I, I get a no, um, it's like, okay, that's okay, because um, it's one less no that I have to get through before I get to my yes. Oh, that's um, a really helpful way of thinking about it. So, so. You, you encourage the no's as well, because uh, yeah, that I've, means you're on the way to a yes. To a yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah I've always been a firm believer that no matter what you do in life, you kind of have to go through, whether that's you know, a handful of no's or hundreds of no's, um, but that one yes could make a big difference in your, in your life and in your business. That that each no gets you just one step closer to, to that yes that, you, that your business needs. How many no's do you tend to have to go through? <laughs> oh, well, it depends. Uh, it depends on whatever I mean, it is. like that you yeah. have had experience with. Sure. Uh, well, one way that I'm trying to uh, market my business is through guest blog posts. Okay. Um, I've, I've, I've been lucky. I've connected with a few who will promote my blog posts very easily. Um, but some of the higher profile ones, you know, they don't right back or they don't respond or they'll say they're not open to guest blog and whatever it may be. Um, so it depends on what it is. I'm sure that you know if you're trying to promote a book to someone uh, you're gonna get a lot of no's. But. So okay let's say no happens. What goes on inside you? What do you do? You move on to the next one. You just like shrug yeah. your shoulders and go, exactly. okay, move what's on. next? Yeah. So you don't spend any time on it? No, unless I hear an outright no. Sometimes if I don't hear back, I will send a follow-up email or two emails, uh, be a little persistent until somebody finally says no. Then when you get that no, you move on. Um, you know, I've, had, I've been trying to connect with a few people who I haven't heard back. Well, that's not really a no quite yet until I get that no. Um, I'll keep pushing at it. Um, but yeah, what do you know? You just move on. As uh, my sister says, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Uh -oh, so <laughs> I to, know it's kind of a yeah, no, metaphor. You know, but but yes. a, yeah, it's a lousy metaphor, but there's a lot of not, uh, doors you have to knock yeah. uh, before. And there are a lot of different ways that you can you go can get to there. get there. Exactly. Which is a great thing. It took me years to learn that. I feel like I used to hear no, and I would feel that was what, that was my answer. Right and I couldn't move from there. Well, I think it's something yeah. that comes, I wasn't always this resilient, I think it's something that comes as you get older. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely this wasn't my uh, way of thinking 10, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, but as you get older you realize that uh, it's a big world out there and just because one says no doesn't mean they're all gonna say no. Mm -hmm. uh, so you just move on. Yeah, and I know it stops a lot of people even from taking that first step, like they'll say, oh, I." That they might work. write the email, but they don't want to press send because it's, ah, oh, what if they say, say no? no? Right, then, you know, at least you know, and then you have enough to move on to, to the next one. Right. Arm yourself with a long list of prospects and work your way down if you have to. Mm -hmm. Plan A doesn't work out, what do they say? There's a lot of uh, B, C, and a whole <laughs> and, lot more. <laughs> right, that's great. Well, this has been wonderful. Same I here. am so thrilled that you Thank came you. on the show. I. I am excited for your upcoming tours. Thank you. I Amazon. really love the idea of your your cooking classes, and I I just know that you are going to thank you really have tremendous success because of your you are completely undeterred. That's right. At this point, I am. So yeah. thank you. You're thank welcome. You. It's been great to be here. Wonderful. Thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Dash, dash, dash,